of preparation to be done and children might be anxious about starting a new grade and keeping up with all of their activities. This year, of course, during COVID-19, it has added more anxiety to the mix, bringing with it a whole new set of worries about health and safety. Amid all of this, children are expected to learn, to concentrate, to retain all that information. But what toll will it take on their mental health? City News web writer and reporter Dilshad Berman joins me now live with some tips from an expert on how to recognize when your children may be feeling anxious or stressed. And Dee, you had it right there when you said this is a tough time in general, but how do you, how do you distinguish between it's a tough time because it's a new start or I'm having a tough time? Good morning. Good morning, Mel. That's right. You know, with mental health issues, it's so hard even for us as adults to actually talk about it, find the right words, express ourselves to say what we're actually going through. So when it comes to the little ones, younger children, they often don't really have that language. They don't really even recognize that what they might be feeling is anxiety. And then when it comes to the older children, teenagers, sometimes they just don't want to talk to their parents or they clam up. So I actually spoke to a child and youth ex uh, therapist um, and she pointed out some signs that you could watch for that maybe will indicate that your child is going through some sort of anxiety. For most of our kids, if we're noticing that they're complaining of, you know, an anxious tummy, if they're talking a lot about worries, even if they're not using the exact wording, but you're seeing that they're ruminating on things that are concerning for them, changes in sleep in eating habits, that's another big one too. We also see it as emotional outbursts or behavioral outbursts. So if there's a change there, it could also be triggered by anxiety because they're feeling you know, such anxiety inside, they might not understand it or know how to process it. So it might be coming out as you know, tears and outbursts or aggression. And as we heard from uh, that uh, therapist there, is it, sometimes you kind of have to know your own child too, right? Because there isn't a universal, you know, put up your hand saying that you need help. You have to understand your child or understand your loved ones around you. Um, is there anything more that she said about what you can do to help? Yes, absolutely. So she did mention a number of coping mechanisms, but one of them that really stood out to me was something that she called the hammer versus hammock method. And really, it just involves asking your child what they need from you at that moment. If they're feeling anxious, if they have a problem, what do they need? Open up that space for them. So in terms of the hammer, do they need you to sit down with them, hammer out a solution, find an actual solution to this problem? Or then do they need you to be the hammock? Do they need you to just cradle them and be with them, offer them some emotional support, you know, maybe some cuddles and just listen to their problems? And so in that sense, it really puts the child in the driver's seat and sort of lets them have that agency to tell you what they need rather than you possibly imposing a solution on them that might not really work for them. Indeed, indeed. I love that opening up that conversation and then defining it dependent on on the the youngster uh, Dee, this is great information here of course your story tonight citynews at .ca citynews at five and six looking forward to your full report thank you yes thank you so much mel